How's it going guys? Johnny here and today I have a remarkable story on the competitiveness and incredible performances of two legendary players. It was a night in NBA history that I feel confident in proclaiming as the greatest scoring night in NBA history. Before I get into all the details of that evening in April of 1978, I want to first take a couple moments to tell you about each of these two superstar players involved that evening. First off, David Thompson. David was a 6'4 shooting guard who spent the prime of his career playing for the Denver Nuggets. David was one of the first high flyers of the NBA. He was also one of the greatest leapers the NBA had ever seen, if not the greatest. As only a 6'4 guard, many believe Thompson was capable of touching the top of a backboard, as he himself claims he could do. This uncanny leaping ability is what earned Thompson his terrific nickname, Skywalker. David Skywalker Thompson was a talented slasher and finisher around the rim. He was also one of the league's premier scorers, averaging over 25 points per game in each of his first three seasons in the league. In his arsenal was a silky smooth jump shot, and despite the fact that the three-point line didn't even exist in the NBA yet, he still had range to hit shots from three-point distance with regularity. He was a very skilled player with sound footwork and fundamentals. Michael Jordan often credited many of his moves to David Thompson, who inspired him as a younger player, which makes sense considering that when you take a look at Thompson's abilities on the court, it really closely resembles Jordan's playing style at times. The second player was none other than the Iceman, George Gervin. Gervin is the greatest San Antonio Spur that you rarely hear about. The Iceman was voted as one of the NBA's 50 greatest players. He was a 6'7 wing who dominated the league offensively, and oftentimes it was with his iconic finger roll. He had a terrific basketball IQ and was known for his quality shot selection. Between his years in the ABA and the NBA, Gervin scored over 26,000 points while shooting over 50% for his career. These are the two men this story is about, both elite players in the league, but on April 9, 1978, their worlds would collide. Heading into this evening, which was the final night of the regular season, they were the league's leaders in scoring for the year. David Thompson was averaging 26.6 points per game, and George Gervin was averaging 26.8 points per game. Only a total of 14 points had separated them from one another heading into each player's final game of the year. What was about to ensue was the greatest battle ever for the league's scoring crown. David Thompson would play his game first in a matchup against the Detroit Pistons. His game would be played just hours before Gervin's was set to begin. Footage does not exist of either of these games due to in large part because John Havlicek of the Boston Celtics was having his farewell game to mark the end of his legendary career. So naturally, just about all of the media attention and television coverage was gravitated towards that game. John Havlicek was definitely worthy of that attention, but media members would soon realize how much they screwed up by not initially covering Thompson and Gervin's games. With David Thompson's game about to begin, and with Thompson only 0.2 points behind Gervin for the league leading average, Thompson's coach Larry Brown and his teammates were ready to feed him the ball in order to get him a massive scoring outing. But Thompson selflessly refused the game plan and wanted to play more of a natural team game and try to get the win as a group. Thompson told his team that they would go out there and see what happened and they wouldn't be forcing anything. Well, what happened was that David couldn't miss anything. He started the game completely on fire, hitting every shot from distance and every shot in close. After the first quarter was over, David Thompson broke Wilt Chamberlain's record that had stood for 16 years. Wilt had held the record for most points in a quarter with 31. After the first quarter had ended, David had 32 points. In Thompson's own words, he felt like Superman on steroids. He didn't let up in the second quarter and continued to dominate. By halftime, he scored 53 points and ridiculously made 20 of his first 21 shots. In my entire life, I've never seen a player so hot from the field, but that was David Thompson this evening. In a piece from David Thompson's book, Skywalker, Thompson speaks on the halftime and third quarter situation, saying, you could see it on the Detroit players' faces, something like, there's no way we can let this guy get 100 on us. 
By now, word had found its way out and camera crews and TV reporters were pouring into the arena. Thompson goes on to say in his book, the Pistons came out determined to shut me down in the third quarter and Chris Ford, Eric Money, ML Carr, and Al Skinner all took turns doubling, tripling, and sometimes quadruple teaming me. I felt like a caged rat, but still somehow managed to score six third quarter points. Despite Detroit's complete change in game plan and their extreme focus on Thompson defensively, David still managed to finish the game with a remarkable 73 points on 28 of 38 from the field and 17 of 20 from the free throw line. At the time, it was the highest scoring performance by anyone not named Will Chamberlain the NBA had ever seen. With Thompson's range, people have speculated that if there had been a three-point line during this era, David's incredible 73-point game instead would have likely exceeded 80 points. Thompson and the Nuggets did ultimately lose the game to the Pistons, but with both teams headed to the playoffs, the final score was completely meaningless. What mattered was that with Thompson's legendary scoring explosion, he had taken a firm lead on the scoring race between him and George Gervin. George was now going to have to have his own offensive eruption and score 59 points just to take the scoring crown back from Thompson. Just hours before San Antonio's game was set to start against New Orleans, the San Antonio Spurs had got word that David Thompson had just scored 73 points and taken a strong lead over their teammate, George Gervin, for the scoring crown. As you can imagine, the Spurs were not too happy about that and were determined to get their star player his crown back in his possession. Spurs coach Doug Moe gathered his players prior to tip-off and said to his team, David Thompson just stole the scoring championship from George. Let's see if we can get our guy 59 points. The team was fired up and ready to make this happen, but George wasn't. He started the game extremely cold, trying to force the situation and struggling to get good looks. He missed all of his first six shots. The Spurs had taken a timeout, and with George struggling, he was ready to concede the crown to David, telling his teammates that he was okay with the outcome and that they wouldn't have to continue forcing him the ball. His teammates were good teammates though and weren't having any of that crap. They refused Gervin's suggestion and the plan stayed the same. Out of the timeout, George made his first shot of the game and then he got in the zone. Pretty soon, George was on his own tear and he was hitting just about everything from the floor. He ended the first quarter hot, but he took it to the next level in the second, breaking David Thompson's record for points in a quarter that he had just set earlier that evening. Gervin scored a record 33 points in the second quarter alone. Wilt Chamberlain held the record for points in a quarter for 16 years before David Thompson broke it. David Thompson held the record for six hours before George Gervin broke it. In another piece from David Thompson's book, he speaks on this moment saying, when I finally made it home, I scanned the dial on the radio and attempted to pick up the San Antonio versus New Orleans broadcast. If it had been any player other than the Iceman, I wouldn't have even bothered. But George was ultra competitive, and he already knew what I had done earlier in the day. He needed 59 points to win the scoring title, and I knew that was not far from his reach. George could fill up the bucket so fast, you would swear it was raining basketballs. I caught the game early in the second quarter, and by halftime, Gervin had fired in 53 points. I knew then that my 73 had been in vain. David was right. With minutes to go in the third quarter, Gervin had scored his 59th point. San Antonio's coaching staff was ready to bench George for the rest of the game once he reached his 59th point. But George requested to stay in a little longer to add to his total, just in case the calculations had been off a bit. Gervin scored two more baskets, bringing his total to 63 points. He did it on 23 of 49 shooting on only 33 minutes played. Gervin decided to sit the rest of the game once he had comfortably secured the scoring title. But if he had continued to play for the majority of the fourth, he also would have had a chance at an 80 point game. It really sucks that these two overlooked legends had these historic performances and yet we have no footage of it whatsoever. But with that being said, Hopefully videos like this will shine a light on them and help immortalize their astonishing day where they dominated the NBA.